Hello students, we'll start with, we'll start revising our unit 3 that is 3D transformations and projections. So in this video we'll cover the part 3D transformations. Right, so for this let's see what is transformation first. These are the contents which we'll see. Okay, now what is transformation? Let us introduce it in short. Mm, we have already seen what is 2D transformation, right? So we have seen what is 2D trans uh, tra two dimensional objects and the operations which we can perform on them. Uh, we know that to represent a 2D object, we need X and Y coordinate, right? It means to draw a 2D object, we need width and height of that object. But in nature object, we are having three dimensional, right? The all objects which we see in this world, in this nature are three dimensional. So to represent such objects, naturally we need three parameters. Out of these three parameters, two are already known. That is x for width and y is considered for height. So in 3D, we need one additional parameter which is called as depth. So and for depth, it is represented by z coordinate. So now we have width x coordinate, height y coordinate and depth as z coordinate in 2d only x and y are there whereas in 3d we will having x y and z these three axes are arranged in such a way that they are normal to each other we know that x and y axis are already normal to each other and z is also arranged in such a way that all the three axes are normal to each other we have already seen the right hand right handed system and left handed system right we have seen in class how to demonstrate it if you if you remember we have seen we have done the demo like curling the fingers and the thumb pointed out so like in our right handed four fingers other than thumb uh, suppose are curling from x to y direction did you get it for right hand rule our right hand's four finger are curling from x to y direction then the thumb of the right hand indicates positive z direction and for left handed system it has the z pointing away from the viewer uh, most of the time right handed system is used and it is considered by default so now we can represent any point by set of three values x y and z here x represent horizontal distance that is width along x axis and y represent vertical distance you know that that is height along y axis and z represent depth along z axis okay so uh, if we want to plot a 3d point it will be in terms of x comma y comma z now achha, here i will like to tell you one more point um, see we have seen that in 2D equations like uh, we know the equations already y minus y1 upon x minus x1 equals to y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1 here a change in x will obviously give a change in y accordingly right but in case of 3D a change in x should give a change in y and z respectively did you get it so here we have to consider two equations that is for y as well as z considering both of them so that a change in x should show a change in z and y both now talking basic uh, mainly about 3d transformations 3d transformations as here you can see the different transformations are fundamental part of computer graphics transformation are the movement of object in cartesian plane right whenever we move the object in a cartesian plane in movement in any case or any situation like a change in size or change in shape or shape change in place all this comes under transformation uh, so here we have already seen it the transformation similar as it was in 2d transformation see there are two types of transformation you know that 2d transformation and 3d and both have similar transformation that is 2d transformation deals with ro translation rotation scaling sharing reflection and same goes for 3d transformation 
Now why to use transformation? Transformation are used to position object, to shape object, to change weaving position and even how something is weaved. Uh, it, in simple words transformation is for modeling and weaving. See we know the basic use of transformation is actually weaving. The main use weaving in the sense like whenever we have to represent any 3D object on a 2D screen we have to have some methods and how to represent it like we have seen it animation shading especially shading is a main application for this like whenever we represent a 2D object into sorry whenever we represent a 3D object on the 2D screen so all this thing and all graphical structures images these all these things need transformations right a change in shape in shape size or to change a place all this has to be done as computer graphics is used in all field including advertising then animation creation filming so transformation is very important part of it and like 2d transformation we have same factors scaling rotation translation in 3d also So we'll see 3D transformations. Now, here we have already seen that 2D does not include Z coordinate. It is specially for 3D. So, if we consider translation, straightforward for translation, scale and rotation is more difficult. More difficult in the sense we can say for 2D only X and Y changes while in 3D we have to consider Z, right? So it is a bit of calculation. Now homogeneous coordinates, we have seen similar homogeneous coordinates for um, 2D also, right? And similarly for, four, for, uh, for 3D we need a 4 into 4 matrix. First is translation. Now what is translation? Do you remember? What is translation? Go on revising with me while seeing the video. Don't just listen and try to remember what is translation. Translation is shifting a point or moving the whole object, right? Translation means shifting a point or we can see moving a whole object. Um, like in 2D for translation we had a 3 into 3 matrix, right? But similarly in 3D we need three translation factors. So the transformation matrix in 3D will be of size 4 into 4. And it will be as given below. This will be your matrices for 3D transformation translation. The matrix, matrix representation is equal, equivalent to the three equations that is obviously for x, y and z where parameters t, x, t, y and t, z are translation factors, right? They specify translation distance for the coordinating direction x, y and z. We know we have already seen t, x and t, y as translation factors like t, x translation in x direction, t, y in y direction and here tz for translation or shifting in z direction the next is rotation rotation in 3d is slightly different i can say than the rotation in 2d in 2d we are performing rotation only in one plane that is x y plane right in x y plane we can rotate a point or object in clockwise or anti-clockwise direction but in case of 3d as there are three axes so we are having three different planes that is x y x z and y z plane so in 3d uh, we must specify to which axis and by what angle we want to rotate the object did you get it here we have three planes that is x y x z and y z so in 3d we have to specify um, specify to which axis and by which angle we want to rotate the object. Here in 3D also um, we are making use of clockwise and anti-clockwise direction. It is same as 2D. Um, in 2D 
actually basically it is simple to detect clockwise and anticlockwise direction but in 3d to detect clockwise and anticlockwise direction we have to look for positive half of the axis towards the origin then we can decide otherwise anticlockwise directions are basically normal conventions here so by convention positive angles produces anticlockwise rotation and negative angles produce clockwise rotation this is the point to be remembered positive angle produces anticlockwise rotation and negative angle produce negative angle produce clockwise rotation so we'll see rotation about axis rotation round around other axis through cylinder point we have seen that x to y y to z z to x that is all the three planes now we will see first is we can see 3d transformation matrix for rotation about x axis okay the rotation about x axis can be obtained from transformation matrix of rotation about z axis like with the cyclic permutation of the coordinate parameters x y and z now it means we have to replace z coordinates by x coordinates y by z and x uh, see let me repeat we have to what how will replace here z coordinates by x coordinates y by z and x by y coordinates so it will x tends to z z tends to y and y tends to x here right and so these are the equations which we get and this is the matrices now rotation about y axis to form a rotation matrix for sorry to form a transformation matrix for rotation about y axis we are making use of transformational matrix of rotation about x axis uh, with cyclic permutation of the coordinate parameter x y and z here x tends to z z tends to y and y tends to x we know this and so here the matrix which we get is this and these are the equations we have already seen this matrices just the difference is this is a 4 by 4 matrix now z transformation um, we have seen for rotation of 2d objects right so for that we are having two different transformation matrix one for clockwise rotation other for anti-clockwise so if you want to rotate a 2d object say Mm, x y by angle theta in anticlockwise direction then if you remember the transformation matrix will be cos theta sin theta minus sin theta cos theta and by multiplying the matrix with point x and y we get cos theta sin theta minus sin theta cos theta right and we get the new parameters of x and y and similarly here we have to consider it for angle z so if uh, if we are performing rotation about z axis clockwise or anti clockwise z coordinates remain unchanged and x and y coordinate changes similarly as in case in 2d so after performing rotation about z axis in anti clockwise say anti clockwise direction we'll get new of x new y and new z and this is the matrices next is scaling what now what is scaling as you can see it is written change in shape or uh, change in size of the object and repositioning uh, repositioning the object relative to the coordinate coordinate origin now what do you mean by changing change in the size of the object we have already seen scaling you know we can scale the object by 2 or by 3 so it is the scaling factor here required if you can see the homogeneous scaling matrices homogeneous scaling, uh, scaling matrices that is x y z and 1 and the new terms can be obtained by multiplying it by the 3d scaling matrices here s x x uh, s y and s z 
as I said are the scaling factors uh, we can say that scaling in 3d point or object is much identical to that of scaling in 2d or object the scaling transformation actually relocates a point with relation to the origin now the formula for 2d and 3d scaling are same but just the additional factor is z coordinate here now basically scaling means you know that changing the size of an object right so the normal scaling matrix in 3d is this given and these are the scaling factors these are the scaling equations we know that for scaling we have to always multiply it right we have done some problems too because it will change accordingly like scaling factor of 2 so multiplied by 2 scaling factor of 3 so multiplied by 3 we have to change the scaling factors here like in tri uh, translation we are supposed to add we will go for translation after this next is reflection yes now what is reflection the name itself suggests reflection that is reflection of one to another image right reflection of one image to another but in this reflection takes place from one plane to another that is a change of object from one plane to another takes place mm. in we can say that there are basically two types of reflection transformation like uh, reflection related to coordinate axis and reflection related to planes so reflection related to axis will be about x y and z and reflection about any plane will have other coordinate system or other matrices so reflection about x axis these are the matrices which we get the matrices same as 2d just it is a homogeneous matrices for a 4 into 4 matrix this is for reflection about y axis reflection about z axis now shearing so what do you mean by shearing shearing is nothing but changing the shape of an object like what is the difference between scaling and shearing in scaling the size is changed but the object's identity is not changed like a equilateral triangle will be equilateral triangle even after changing its size multiplying it two three times or or reducing it two three times but shearing means actually changes the shape of the object at as it shows as it does not give accurate changes in all direction it only gives changes in suppose x direction or y direction so changing only one direction will obviously shows show a change in the uh, shape of the object this is 3d shearing you can see this change in shape this is the 3d shearing matrices So let's revise once. In short, 3D transformation is similar to 2D transformation. Transformation is nothing but the movement of an object, we can say, or change, in, and the movement can be in any pattern, like change in shape, size, too. Then types of transformations. Uh, types of transformation are similar as 3D similar as 2d that is translation rotation scaling shearing and reflection now why to use transformation the main aim for using transformation is modeling and weaving so what is 3d transformation basically deals with 4 into 4 homogeneous matrices when in case of 2d it was 3 into 3 then for translation you know the change in shape takes uh, change in place takes place that is the we can say an object is dragged from one place to another in rotation the rotation takes place around z axis y axis and x axis 
here the default case always will be anti clockwise. Uh, you have to remember this term x tends to y, y tends to z, and z tends to x. This causes the cyclic permutation. Now, this matrix is for x axis rotation, y axis rotation, and z axis rotation. We have already seen in the class with the proper diagram the how the rotation takes place from one axis to another or one plane to another. Then scaling, scaling is change in size of the object. These are the scaling factors Sx, Xy, Xz. Reflection, reflecting one object around the axis or from one plane to another. This is for x axis, y axis and z axis. Then shearing, shearing is change in shape of an object. This is the example they gave how the shape changes. If we suppose we have a square and we drag from one end, extend it, or suppose we suppose we extend this line and drag it up above, the square will turn into a rectangle. This can happen in case of shearing. That's it.